Hello and welcome to Only Connect, the quiz that's all about making connections. Like a dating website, but without the inevitable number of freaks and weirdos. Or is it? Let's meet the teams. On my right, David Edwards, a committed Welsh rugby fan with a degree in metallurgy. Charlotte Martin, an English graduate who enjoys retro computer games and fair weather gardening. And their captain, Richard Edwards, a keen guitarist and amateur footballer who works as a journalist for a science fiction magazine. Captain Richard is flanked by his father and his wife. They are the Edwards family. Richard, you overruled your dad in your heat against the inorganic chemists. Has there been a family feud since then? Well, aside from being written out of the will and told never to come home again, no. You were right, of course. You got the points. Yeah. <laughs> on that occasion. <laughs> Tonight, you are facing, on my left, Colin Warlow, an Oxford maths graduate with an interest in cricket and European travel. Nick Atty, a civil servant with a PhD in genetics from Leeds University. And their captain, James Hasty, an accomplished ballroom dancer who enjoys playing poker and bridge online. They're all members of an executive trade union council. They are the trade unionists. James, you beat the rock and rollers in your heat. How different was it being here than playing along at home? It's a lot harder here than it is at home. I think that's because we don't have access to beer. Well, there may be beer for you if we finish the quiz, but that won't happen unless we start it, perhaps with round one. Later on in the show, The Connecting Wall will be going live online if you fancy playing along. But in the meantime, we prefer you to simply shout at the screen. Teams, I want you to tell me what is the connection between four apparently random clues. Trade unionists, you won the toss, but you decided to put the Edwards family in first. So please pick a question. Line, please. All right, the first clue of the quarterfinal is coming up. I can tell you they're going to be picture clues. Your time starts now. Right, that's some of... Um, I don't, what kind of series is it? I don't know what it is. No, I don't uh, know. Next, please. That's Brian Lara. Is it? Brian Lara. Right, 500? Could it be 501? I think 501. OK, try that. That's going to be Jean's next, I was like. 501. Coming in after just two clues, you get three points. You're absolutely right. So that first picture, what do you think that denotes? Um, I think that that means the sum of a certain series adds up to 501. Very good. A full-on mathematician would be able to read that as the sum of the first 18 prime numbers. That makes 501. Why is Brian Lara there? He, he famously scored 501 for Warwickshire, I think it was in 1995. He holds the world record total for a single innings, 501 he batted for. And I think you guessed the next one was going to be a pair of Levi 501 jeans. And why are we looking at a dartboard? Is that what all of the scores on the dartboard add up to? No. No, but you um, normally in competition darts you play... From 501? I was doing it from 501 down. That's right. Zero. In professional darts they start with a score of 501 and try to get down to zero. Very well done. Coming in early, you're off the blocks, and it's over to the trade unionists to choose a question. Uh, twisted flax, please. OK. Your first clue of the quarterfinal is coming up now. That, that's it. OK. Next. My silver's a horse from Long John Silver. I can't think of anything else. G into silver. OK. Next. <coughs> He's a film producer as well as being on the Found it's Penny Ola. Does it find his captain to point? No, there's no more silver. Ten seconds. Did you cross them? Did you cross them? Yes, that's good. They are things you can cross. How would you cross Christopher Columbus? OK. I... Didn't I tell you how through. you cross Christopher Columbus, by teasing him about his hair. He <laughs> hates that. But I'm afraid that is not the right answer. So there's a possible bonus for the Edwards family. Is it that South American countries are named after them? That's what it is. It's the etymologies of South American countries. Little Venice is Venezuela. So named by whom? Um, oh, um, De Soto, no? No, it was Amerigo Vespucci. Named it that because it reminded him, actually, of Venice because of the houses on stilts in the water. Argentina, named after Silva, Colombia, of course, uh, Christopher Columbus, and Ecuador, named after the line of latitude that passes through the country. Etymologies for South American country names. Well done for the bonus, and it's your turn to pick a question. 
Uh, can I have the Horn Viper, please? Yes, you may. Ah, that sound means you're going to have the music question. You look happy about that. <laughs> oh, <delighted>. to... <laughs> it's good news. You're going to hear some lovely pieces of music. Oh, starting now. Through the good early years and for all the in-between Next, please. No summer's high. It's called Sound of the Stevie Wonder. No one you like. No this was the room, woman in red that was in the film. They were all written for films. Or to be the theme tune from a movie. Have another go. What's going on? Uh, they all won Oscar, um, an Oscar for Best Song. That's it. I need that kind of precision in the quarterfinal. They all won the Oscar for Best Song. We heard All the Way from The Joker is Wild. That won the Oscar in 1957. I Just Called to Say I Love You, the Stevie Wonder track played in The Woman in Red, won the Oscar in 1984. And the one I think you recognised, Lose Yourself from Eight Mile. Eminem got that in 2002. And you came in sadly before we had the chance to hear Over the Rainbow, which won the Oscar in 1939 with The Wizard of Oz. Trade unionists, it's over to you. Water, please. Water. First clue coming up now. That's... That's... that's, 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 that's a cube to me. Uh, next, please. So this is... This is ways of doing it. We're going to go for one more. I think we should gamble. Go on. These are ways of measuring units of length. That is exactly what they are. Well done. They are derivations of actually of imperial lengths. Elbow to fingertips, what do you think that measures? A uh, cubit? No, it's the L. Oh. Pieces of cloth were, were folded there. The left feet of 16 churchgoers is the perch, which is a land length. Span of outstretched arms, that's a fathom. And nose to fingertip of Henry I. Do you know what that that's would measure? A yard. That is a yard. It was decreed by Henry I that it would be measured thusly. So, very well done. Three points for coming in after two clues. And it's back to the Edwards family to choose a question. Uh, Eye of Horus, please. OK, Eye of Horus. What is the connection here? Time starts now. Next, please. Of sports teams, teams, sports teams, nicknames, sports teams. Excellent. Next, please. No. Oh, oh, no, yeah. no Monty Python. Uh, is it Monty Python or is it at last the 1948 show? What do you think? Uh, I'm going to get Monty Python. Yeah, Monty Python sketches. Ten yeah. seconds. Monty, Monty, Monty Python, Python episodes. episodes. Yes. Yeah, that's what they're going to call Monty Python, Python. episodes. Um, oh. what going to call. They're all possible names for Monty Python. They are not all possible names for Monty Python, so I'm going to show the fourth clue to your opponents, the trade unionists, and there's a possible bonus point available. I'm going to Monty Python. Of t no, they're not. They're all possible names of, of TV programmes. Dead Belgium, so it's not the dead donkey. Can't chat right, too there long. There are other rejected names for TV programmes. That is what it is. Owl Stretching Time was an original name for Monty Python's Flying Circus, but the others are for different programmes. They are working titles for TV comedies. Do you know what any of the others are? Dead Belgians Don't Count was Drop the Dead Donkey. That's right, because it was something said in a newspaper office. Drop the dead donkey, dead Belgians don't count. What about the others? Only Fools and Horses. Reddies was a working title for Only Fools and Horses. And The Fighting Tigers. Think laterally, this is Only Connect. What might it have been? The Goodies. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad's Army. Oh, the yes. Fighting Tigers was a name for Dad's mm. Army. Very well done. You get a bonus point and you also get the final question, which is two reads. Your first clue is coming up now. Yes, really. okay, so it Next, please. That's Horace. Horace Walpole. Did he win? Yes. We'll take one more. Next, please. Horace. Yes, yes, they are. They are all called Horace. You are quite right. I heard you muttering the name <laughs> of Horace Walpole. He was the author of The Castle of Otranto, Horace, the Roman poet. Rumpole of the Bailey, his first name was Horace, and you buzzed in before we saw 
head of the slug club at Hogwarts. That is a character called Horace as well. So very well done. At the end of round one, the Edwards family have got six points. The trade unionists also have six points. In round two, I'll be asking the teams what is the fourth in a sequence. You'll see up to three connected clues, and using that connection, you should be able to deduce what is fourth. And then tell me, no good keeping it to yourself, no points that way. Edwards family, you'll be going first again. Two reads, please. All right, first in a sequence is coming up. What is fourth? Time starts now. Oh, I think it's round the Cluedo board. Yes. Um, is it? I, I think we might we'll have to more to get across as well. Yeah. Conservatory is a corner, isn't it? Yes, so there are four corners. Next, please. No, no, but it from library and... Do you want another? Uh, uh, no, the next one will be library, but I can't think what's down in the corner. It's a secret right? passage to the kitchen. From the conservatory, no, so what's... Ten seconds. Dining room, kitchen, right in the middle, but... Uh, I'll do another one even after me. Three seconds. Try kitchen. Uh, kitchen. That is not the correct answer, so I'm going to show the third in the sequence to the trade unionists as a possible bonus point if you can tell me what's fourth. I think it's the ballroom. Is the fourth one. Ballroom? That's not it either. I think you both know these are rooms on a Cluedo board. We're travelling clockwise and next would be the study. Study is what's next to the library. Well, no points there, but trade unionists, you have a chance to pick another question. Horned viper, please. All right. You're going to be seeing pictures here. What would you expect to see in the fourth picture? Here's the first one. That's a heart. Yeah. That's a heart. Okay. Next, please. That's a brain. Heart brain. Is that a brain? That's a brain. Anything? Seats of emotion. I don't know. Nothing. Next, please. That's, that's a liver. Oh. It's a heart, brain, liver. Are these. Okay, are these, are these, are these, are these in order of weight or something? I don't know. Are they weight? I don't think so. Well, are they silent? Ten seconds. Skin. Okay, try that. Yeah. Skin? That is the right answer. But why? They're increasing size, so the heart's the fourth biggest organ, then brain, then liver, and skin is the biggest. Your reasoning's wrong, but your answer's <laughs> right. Okay. I'm very glad you're not due to perform open heart surgery on me, because that first picture is a lung. Mm. It's the right lung. <laughs> the right lung is actually heavier than the left. It's the heaviest oh, organs yes. in the body. Then the brain, then the liver, and the heaviest would be the skin. skin. Well, I don't really want to think about how they measured that. But you gave me the answer skin, and that's quite right. So you get the points and back to the Edwards family to pick a question. Uh, twisted flax, please. OK. What is the fourth in this sequence? The first is coming up now. Uh, next, please. Trajan. Could be Trajan. I don't know. Do you want me to go to the next? Yeah, Shall next, I go to the next? Next, next please. <laughs> no. <laughs> who, who <laughs> right. to Trajan? Marcus Aurelius. I don't know. Marcus Aurelius. Any idea? Any idea? Oh, nothing at all. Sorry. No. Marcus Aurelius. Not correct, I'm afraid. So, back to the trade unions for a possible bonus. Okay. Vespasian? That's not right either. What was your thinking, Edward's family, about the connection? Um, um, we thought there were a sequence of Roman emperors and we kind of hoped that Marcus Aurelius might be next because we've heard of him. There are a lot of emperors to choose from and I think it'll be another one you've heard of. It is Roman emperors in chronological order. Next would be Hadrian yeah. of wall fame. David, I think people at home will be quite impressed to hear you sort of mutter, I don't really know about Roman emperors, it'll probably be something like Trajan next. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Trajan, some would say, is the more obscure name oh, there. Yeah. Adrian would be the following one. So no points for anyone there. Unionists, please pick your own question. Eye of Horus, please. All right, the Eye of Horus. What's the fourth in this sequence? First one coming up now. Okay. Next, please. Are these permissions? Yes. Great permission. Great permission. Right permission. Then execute. I think I'll take another. Next, please. Still be. I'm it's D. It's not with these deletes. Can't it? See, it's great for you. Oh, yes, yes, absolutely right. Well done. Delete. That is the answer. Brilliant. Why is it delete? It's the 
I'm going to let Nick answer this because he knows it far better than there I four, do. There are four stages in something in databases or something like that. Yeah, they're simply database functions and they're known um, by the acronym, acronym CRUD. CRUD. So it's C-R-U-D, so it's something beginning with D and delete is generally a thing that computers tend to do, especially when I've been writing things on them. So very well done, you get the points and it's back to the Edwards family to choose a question. Lion, please. OK, first in a sequence coming up, what's fourth time starts now? It's got to be next. Next. What are we talking here about? All numbers in binary, in which case the next one will be one... Uh, is it would be three, seven, nine, which would be... Uh, one, oh, 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 one. Try that. What, well, you think that'll be the last one? So if, it, if they're going up in twos in binary, so that's Do you want me to go for the next one? Ten seconds. One zero zero one or next? No, go for it, go for it. One say. zero zero one. Yeah. One zero zero one. That is not the right answer. But it is an opportunity for me to say to you that there are ten sorts of people in the world. Those who understand binary and those who don't. <laughs> I think your reasoning would have fallen down if you'd seen the third in the sequence, which I must show to the trade unionists for a possible bonus. These are palindromic primes, so what's the next palindromic prime? Not the opportunity for a chat. One, five, one. One, six, no, that's far too long. No, that's not it. Although, you know, not bad stab in the dark. I think your opponents worked out, obviously, once there's a three, it's nothing to do with binary. They are palindromic prime numbers, and the next would be 151 prime numbers that read the same backwards and forwards. No points on that one. Trade unionists, only water remaining for you. I'd like to know what is the fourth in this sequence. Here's the first. Speech and expression, anything for anyone? Don't know, something okay, you computer. Next, please. Religion. Oh, freedom of speech is the first. Um, oh, freedom. But freedom of religion is not the second amendment because that's the right to bear arms. Oh, so that's the, 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 the UNC. Four freedoms. Oh, the four freedoms. What's the next one? Next, please. Freedom from fear sounds right to me. Um, I haven't a clue, but I, sure I, I, think, I think that's right. From fear. You think correctly, it is right. From fear is the last one. Why? The four freedoms. Now, the four freedoms as expressed by Franklin D. Roosevelt in his message to the Congress in January 1941. Freedom of speech and expression, freedom of religion, freedom from want, freedom from fear. Very good score. At the end of round two, then, the Edwards family have got six points but the trade unionists are ahead with 12. <laughs> Round three is the connecting wall, and it's going to be going live online if you fancy playing along at the same time as watching. And if your attention span is even shorter than that, why not listen to an iPod as well? Trade unionists, your turn to go first this time, so please choose lion or water. Lion, please. OK, you've got two and a half minutes to sort these 16 clues into four groups of four, starting... Now. Okay, cakes, Jaffa cakes, 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 Eccles cakes. Another any others? Okay. There's a sigmoid and a hyperbolic. They're both. They're, a they're, doozer is a, is, a, is a flipper. A, a bowling. A oh, and a slider. Let's try that then. Yes. Slider, doozer, flipper, flipper bounce. Yes. yes. Right. Um, okay. Sigmoid and hyperbolic are types okay. of curve. See, a ceiling is a function. Free winning. Looks like yeah. Boxcar Willy. Boxcar Willy. Fred. That doesn't help, though. Why? Echo, because... It's still Echo. Oh, sorry, Echo Willy. Sorry. Sorry. Cake. 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 Okay. Okay. Try some of those two. Oh, come on, come on. Sigmoid. Hyperbolic. So I need two, two long and a ceiling. Try ceiling and two long. Come on, just for me. Okay. Echo, Tootsie, and Willy for dogs or something like that. So you want me to try these? Yeah, try them. Oh, nice one, Colin. Well done. Okay. Three strikes and you're out now. OK, well, I think for a few minutes, cos we've got yeah. some time. We've got plenty of time. We've done two curves. Sigmoid, Sigmoid and hyperbolic. Hyperbolic. I don't recognise any other curves, oh. though, so... OK. It's Alexandria, though, with a lighthouse. Was it, it, was it? Barcelona. Yes, it was a lighthouse. It's a boxcar. Boxcar's what a caboose. Barcelona's yeah. a song. Barcelona's a song and it's an Olympic play. The ceiling pronounced differently. Jaffa's in... Uh, um, so, yeah, so um, Jaffa and Af Alexandria are probably both cities in Africa. Yes, good point, but, but I can't see them. might be, but Barcelona isn't. No, they could all be cities with some function. If we start on the outer town, it's not a function. Function. In function. In function. Alexandria We've function. We've got a minute left. Ceiling function? Well, Alexandria well, function, I've never heard, but OK. Nor have I. Nor have I. Right. Ceiling is a my Yes, I'm hyperbolic and sigmoid. 
Okay, sorry. Boxcar function, is that one we've heard of? I like the function. I like the function. Boxcar parts are in a hyperbolic ceiling. If it's if it's those so four, the, yeah, those. Yes, and then that leaves us the three so things that we like. So sigmoid, hyperbolic, ceiling, and boxcar, box which leaves us before the daylight like cities as well. Mm -hmm. yes. That's it. You've solved the wall. No debating time. Well done. Four points for finding the groups. Let's look for bonus points from those connections. Bouncer, flipper, doucera, slider. These are ways of bowling the ball in cricket. That's it. They're types of cricket delivery. Next one, Wellard, Eccles, Tootsie, Willie. These are famous dogs. Mm, give me a bit more. You were the dog person. Fictional Fic dogs. Famous fictional dogs. They're fictional dogs. They're dogs from television. Actually, they're all in UK soaps. Wellard and oh. Willie from EastEnders. Tootsie from Emmerdale. Eccles from Coronation Street. They're fictional dogs from UK soaps. Next one, boxcar, ceiling, sigmoid, hyperbolic. Functions. They are mathematical functions. You're looking for curves. Sigmoid is a curve. <laughs> the others, mathematical functions. And the last group, Jaffa or Jafar, Alexandria, Toulon, Barcelona. Cathedrals, games, oranges. <laughs> They're cities. I need an cities. answer. I'll go with the oranges. I liked that the best. They are not oranges. What they are is Mediterranean ports. Oh, oh ports. Jaffa or Jafar, oh, Israel, ports. Alexandria, and Egypt, Toulon, and France, oh, Barcelona, man. of course, in Spain. Mediterranean ports. But four points for the groups you found, plus three bonus points. That's a total of seven. Time to bring back the Edwards family to see what they can do with the connecting wall. A new wall, of course. Water, that's what they'll be getting. Edwards family, you've got two and a half minutes to solve it. Starting now. Um, okay. Okay. Greek letters. We've got Greek letters. Let's okay. start with that one. Okay. Gamma, pi, and beta. Yep, there's um, that as well. Well, okay, what else have we got as options? Okay. Uh, there's neutron, pulsar, oh, types of star, neutron, pulsar, uh, pulsar um... Are they there? No. Are there? No. So, no. Right. Dent. Uh, Arthur Dent. Arthur, Arthur Dent. Dent. Are there any other Arthurs? Uh, Arthur Ingersoll, is there one? Uh, Willis. I know that name from Charles. Citizen. That Watches. Citizen. Yeah. Pulsar. Omega. Omega. And... and Riley? Ingersoll. Oh. Right. Okay. Right. Life of Riley, life of pie, life of crime. Um, life of... Ooh. Don't know. Um, life of the party. Ah, uh, excellent. Okay, so now we've got four Greek letters, I think. You've beta. used a minute and you've got three strikes. Right, Alpha, so. gamma, beta. beta. No, we, no haven't. we haven't. Right, so it can't um, be that. Virgo. John Virgo. Plus... Types of star. The constellations. Oh, um. Osman. Are they, um. players of something? Willis. We've got. Um. Willis. Quincy Willis. Quincy oh. Willis. Um. No. Uh, um. Could there be snooker? Snooker related. John Virgo. Um, Osman, no. No. Osman, uh, right, I'd go for Alpha, Neutron, Gamma, and Beta. There you go, you've solved the wall. Very well done. So that is four points for the groups you found. What about bonuses for the connections? Omega, Citizen, Pulsar, Ingersoll. They're all watch manufacturers. That's it, they're famous watchmakers. Next one, Pi, Riley, Crime, The Party. Uh, they all, can all be preceded up by Life Of. That's right, The Life of Pi novel by Jan Martel. You can live a life of Riley or a life of crime, in some cases both. Will be the life of the party, so that's it. And the next one, gamma, alpha, neutron, beta. They're all types of radioactive decay. Try again. Um, emissions. Uh, radioactive emissions. Radi types of radiation. That's what I want to hear. They're types of radiation, ionising radiation. That's what they are. And the last one, Dent, Virgo, Osman, oh, Willis. Snooker snooker I think it's snooker, or snooker commentators. It's snooker commentators. Snooker commentators. That is absolutely not what they are. <laughs> now, this is one for the quiz and game show specialists. They are adjudicators on television. Susie Dent sits in Dictionary Corner. John Virgo on the snooker programme was an adjudicator. The brilliant Richard Osman from Pointless. I know he likes a game of pool in the bar, but not a commentator. And Wincy Willis, the weather girl, was the adjudicator on Treasure Hunt. So, yes, adjudicators, that's what they are. You get four points for the groups you found, three bonus points, that's a total of seven. Let's see what that does to the scores going into round four. 
the Edwards family have got 13 points. The trade unionists are ahead with 19. So into round four, the missing vowels round. This is where we take well-known names, phrases, sayings, titles, anything like that, remove the vowels and squidge together the consonants. Teams, you need to tell me what those disguised words are. And it's very polite of you to sit listening to me as if you actually want to know. I'm going to assume that having both won your heats and surely watched at least one episode from our preceding multiple series, you know the rules of round four. I hope so, because we're about to play it. Fingers on buzzers, then. The first group are all Bildungsroman novels. Edward's Family. Sons and Lovers. By D.H. Lawrence, correct. Edward's. Anne of Green Gables. Correct. Don't know this one. Jeanette Winterson's Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit. Next clue. Edward's. Black Swan Rising. I'm afraid that's not right. You lose a point, possible bonus unionists. Black Swan Green. That is correct. Next category, Sir Christopher Wren Buildings. Edwards. Royal Observatory. Correct. Edwards. Sheldonian Theatre. Correct. Unionists. The Monument. Correct. Edwards. Royal Hospital Chelsea. Correct. Next category, added to the 2011 Basket of Goods. Edwards. Hair Conditioner. Correct. This is a weird one. Medium Density Fibre Board. <laughs> Next clue. No, too long. Oven-ready joint. Next clue. It's a strange category. No, too late, I'm afraid. Too late, I'm afraid I'd started speaking. The answer is smartphone handset. Next category, colloquial names for plants. Unionists. Red hot poker. Correct. Edwards. Baby's breath. Correct. Edwards. Mother-in-law's tongue. Correct. <laughs> that last one was Bird of Paradise, but the time is up. And after a rather nail-biting round four, the Edwards family have improved to an impressive 20 points, but the winners with 22 points <laughs> are the trade unionists. Unionists, you seem relieved. You are through to the semi-final. Very well done. Edward's family, unlucky. You've been a great team. I'm afraid we have to lose you. Please join me next time and I will have more contestants, questions, connections and clues and so many brainy contortions you'll think you've gone to a pole dancing class at Mensa. They're on Saturdays at four. Goodbye. The final part in our brand new series, Ceramics, A Fragile History, is coming up here on BBC Four in just a couple of moments this evening. And then at 10, Andrew Graham Dixon uncovers the life and work of artist Edward Burra in I Never Tell Anybody Anything.